So let's talk about the relationship between cortisol and your sleep. First of all, what is cortisol? It's a stress hormone and has a lot of different functions with the immune system for countering stress. It's a survival hormone. And if it's too high, it can definitely interfere with your sleep. Normally, when you go to bed at night, ideally at 11 o'clock or maybe even 10, 45 would be the perfect time because that is when the circadian waves start happening. And I'm talking about the sleep cycles. So it starts over here and you go through your different waves of sleep through the night from a superficial sleep, which is the REM sleep, to the deeper levels, which end up to be the delta wave sleep. Now, right around between 12 o'clock midnight and two, this is where you have the lowest cortisol. Ideally, it should be the lowest amount of cortisol. The highest level of cortisol is between six, eight, and maybe nine o'clock in the morning. But what happens, cortisol can start going higher earlier through the night and counter the depth of deep sleep. So what happens is you might sleep, but you're not getting the deeper, restful, rejuvenation sleep. You wake up feeling just as tired as when you went to bed. So the real problem behind a lot of issues with sleep is this darn high cortisol. So I wanna talk about a little bit about how cortisol is regulated in the body. So you have the hypothalamus up in the brain. It's like the master gland. Then you have the pituitary. That is also in the brain, but it's slightly lower. And then you have the adrenal. So HPA, it's called the HPA axis, okay? So there's a little tiny group of cells in the hypothalamus called the PVN, paraventricular nuclei, that send a signal down the pituitary, okay, in response to some stress reaction. And the communication between the master gland hypothalamus and the pituitary is called CRH. I'm just gonna to try to abbreviate some of these hormones right now. And then the communication then goes from the pituitary down to the adrenal gland, and that communication is called ACTA. So basically you can look at it like this. Here we have the coach on the football team, then we have the quarterback, and then we have the players right here. We have two players. You have two adrenals. They're right on top of the kidneys, right deep through. And the cortisol is a stress hormone. There's a lot. And the, so the cortisol is a survival stress hormone. Um, I have a lot of videos on the cortisol. I put the links down below, but here's what you need to know. If there's enough cortisol being produced, okay, normally it works like a feedback loop, like a, like a thermostat. There should be signals that are sent back up here and over here to turn off this production of these hormones. So the goal is to send the signal, we need more cortisol down through here. The adrenal complies with that order, produces cortisol, and then there should be a turnoff switch, okay? In theory. But what happens when this off switch gets busted? Then you have more cortisol, more cortisol, more cortisol. It becomes a chronic situation. And if you have too much of any one hormone, the receptors in the cells start resisting that hormone. So then you get um, cortisol resistance, just like you would have insulin resistance. So that makes everything worse. The body will start making more and more cortisol because the cortisol is being blocked. So the feedback signal never gets back up to here. So these guys never get the uh, information to turn off the flow of cortisol so it keeps producing more and more and more. The sleep mechanism is composed of two things. One is the locus ceruleus and the other is the rapha nuclei. And these little on-off switches in the back part of the brainstem uh, work. One works to wake you up, the other one works to help you go to sleep. And these centers are greatly influenced by this hormone right here, okay? Because this here raises noradrenaline. And that would be a similar hormone to adrenaline, which will wake you up. But we don't want it raised in the middle of the night, especially at two o'clock or even um, at four o'clock. We want it to be as low as possible. So we don't wanna stimulate this, okay? There's another player involved called the amygdala, and that is a little area in the brain that's similar to your adrenals. It's kind of like the adrenals, but in your brain. 
Um, if you have a problem with this right here, you can even get panic attacks. So it really is involved in a lot of stress responses. So this is also triggered when we have too much of this communication too. So we have uh, a problem with different parts of the brain that are activated um, that's going to prevent you from getting to sleep, all because of this darn cortisol will not turn off because cortisol is also supposed to turn off both of these as well in the feedback loop. But if there's a problem with it, we never get the off switch. So question is, what do we do with this high cortisol? You wanna um, obviously try to find out what's causing your stress in life and do whatever you can to handle that. Uh, if you're in a situation with people and they're stressing you out, change that environment really quick because it's not worth it. You really need to create an environment that you have a lot lower stress. Now, there's some things that you can do. One is go for long walks. And I'm talking about 45 to 60 minutes every single day, not of high intensity, but long walks somewhere in nature where you're not listening to a headphone, you're not on your cell phone. You need to disconnect, you need to get more space. This is probably one of the best things you can do, especially since most people sit behind a computer for eight to 10 to 12 plus hours all day long, and then they, you know, go watch TV and then they go to bed. So we want to extract yourself from that desk and get out there and get some space. Acupressure. There's a do-it-yourself acupressure technique in which I show you how to extract stress from your body. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. Now I want to talk about some other things that you can take to reduce stress. Now, these two right here are amino acids, okay? L-tyrosine and L-theanine. Both of these help in the regulation of noradrenaline, okay? So these two will make you feel calmer. The other minerals that are involved in supporting cortisol to make sure it's not too spiked would be calcium. Very, very important. Magnesium, as in calcium magnesium, that's a really good remedy. Also potassium, you can get this from vegetables. You can get all of these from vegetables right here. And zinc, very, very important in a lot of different things especially sleep. So these are the minerals involved with regulating cortisol. There's a neurotransmitter called GABA, which is another good one. And that is going to decrease that little area of your body called the locus ceruleus, which is involved in triggering this right here. So when you, when you, if you take GABA, you can actually lower the adrenaline and the, the little center in the hypothalamus that starts the whole chain reaction. So this is why when people take GABA, they feel um, less anxiety, calmer, they sleep better. Ashwagandha is one of the best herbs to act as an adaptogen. So it helps you adapt to stress. It increases your stress tolerance and it has the ability to help uh, inhibit uh, adrenal hormones, okay? Magnolia. Magnolia is another great herb that will increase DHEA which is like the buffer for cortisol. It'll help inhibit high levels of cortisol. And there's another remedy called NAC that will also limit the noradrenaline as well. Uh, and then vitamin C. When you go through stress, believe it or not, your body dumps vitamin C. So you lose vitamin C and you need vitamin C um, for the manufacture of certain hormones. So vitamin C is very important in supporting an adrenal gland that is stressed out. Um, so don't forget to take more vitamin C or consume foods that are high in vitamin C. By the way, always take vitamin C in its complete complex. Don't take it as a synthetic fraction of the vitamin C complex because you need the whole complex. But this one is probably the most important right here. And it's just simple B1. I recommend getting it from nutritional yeast. Why? Because B1 is necessary to make some of these neurotransmitters like GABA. And it also um, helps calm the autonomic nervous system down, specifically the flight or fight mechanism, which is called the sympathetic nervous system. And also you're living off of coffee or tea with sugar and alcohol. These are the things that will deplete B1. The uh, tannins in coffee and tea make B1 unavailable to you. So that's a big blocker right there. And of course, sugar and carbs, especially refined carbs, will deplete B1 and definitely alcohol will. 
So, of course, avoid these things right here, but don't forget to take nutritional yeast because that's probably one of the most important things that you can do. So the whole goal is not to keep cortisol at zero, but to help normalize cortisol so you don't have anything interfering with these very important sleep cycles, yet you still have the function of cortisol, which is vital for all the survival mechanisms, including the immune system. All right, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.